It's 10 p.m. here on TV3. This is the late news. My name is Grace Hamwa Asari. Tonight, results of the new patriotic party primaries in orphan constituencies out as fresh faces pop up. We ask whether the candidates can wrestle seats for the party come 2020. Late news is live on your DSTV channel 279 and on our live stream on Facebook and on 3news.com. Send us your views and comments on our various social media platforms and they will be read live here. First, let's take a look at the highlights. Now in the highlights tonight, a delegate, Jonathan Ni Otu Ankara, collapsed at the Kolebut police station, the location for the Ablikuma South primaries for the NPP. He was quickly rushed to the Kolebut teaching hospital, where he is reported to have passed on. Also, former President Jerry John Rawlins has joined the leadership of the National Democratic Congress NDC to focus its attention on winning the 2024 general elections. He says, though the main opposition party is vigorously campaigning towards the 2020 elections, winning the polls will only be possible in 2024. On the international front, people have voted in Afghanistan's presidential poll amid heavy security and bomb attacks from insurgents. More than 70,000 security forces were deployed across the country to counter Taliban militants who have vowed to target polling stations. The twice-delayed vote is taking place after Taliban U.S. free stores collapsed earlier this month. So these were the stories that were topical and trended in the day. Let's now do the big one. This is your election command center and tonight the new patriotic party's parliamentary candidate for the Ododododio constituency, Ni Lante Banaman, says he is confident of winning the 2020 general elections. He said this after being declared winner of the NPP primaries in the constituency. Ni Lante Banaman won the NPP primaries in the Ododo Diodo constituency with 543 votes, beating three other contenders. Ni Yaboy Anan pulled 220 votes, Reginald Nibi Ayibonte pulled 70 votes, while Ni Achelenate had 11 votes. Before the declaration of results, some concerns were raised by the aspirants. <laughs> Order was finally restored and proceedings continued. The winner, Neil Antebanaman, said the party is poised for victory in the 2020 elections. I have proven that I am a spectacular unifier and I work with each one of them so that we can attain 2020. 2020, I know we are winning and the delegates have spoken. We have decided to take it and we are winning 2020 with Neil Antebanaman. The other candidates pledged their support for the winner. For my wealth, my intellectual muscle, and my advocacy and oral ability, I will support him to continue the seat for I am a true son of the soil. I am a shite. I am an MPP. Patriot, and I would forever support my party. So let's stay a while longer on this, but move away from Ododio Dio and let's go to Ningo Pram Pram. Let me quickly run you by some of the results that have come in so far. Now, Alex Smarte won by with 269 votes against Rita Akwele Adote, who had 207. When we go to Ablekuma South, Bernadine Enya Brown won with 347 votes against Samuel Sabalate, who had 273 votes. In the Boga East constituency, 
Abole Emmanuel won with 111 votes against David, with who had 87 votes. Away from that constituency, in the Nabdab constituency, Boniface Agambela won with 147 votes. So let me quickly run you by the winners who came up in this election. Now, here we have Eunice Lassi winning with 194 votes at the Shege constituency. And then... Yilo Krobo, it was won by Francis Jete Aperte with 353 votes. Lots of the results coming in tonight. At the Afran Plain South Consistency, William Hall won with 307 votes. Pru East Consistency, Joshua Kweku Abonkra won with 202 votes against David Yao Mensa with 154 votes. And the Isojaman Consistency, we had Paul Asari and Sangwina, 539 votes. In the Kepko South Consistency, NS Mensa won with 271 votes against Sperry Mensa's 133 votes. Votes in the other East constituency, Sarah Bubaki Pobi won with 263 votes against 126 Pobi by Betty Koleki Achupui Kwashi. And then in the Salaga North constituency, we have Abdallah Idi winning with 94 votes against Tahiru Fuseni's 67 votes. Karaga constituency, we have Dr. Amin Anta winning with 385 votes against the 78 vote polled by Sayuti. So these are some of the results that have come in so far from the NPP primary elections. Let's do stay on this and speak with Evans Nimako, who is Director of Research and Elections of the New Patriotic Party. Thank you, sir, for joining us tonight on News at 10. Thank you very much. I hope you're doing well. Very well, thank you. So, did the process and the winners meet your expectation? Hello. Hello, Ntana, can you hear me? Yes, please. Yes, I was asking if you are satisfied with the process as well as the winners who have come up in this primaries. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, I must say that the new Patriotic Party once again has conducted itself in a manner that has ensured its internal democracy being deepened across the country, across the 98 constituencies that conferences were organized. I must say that the party as of now is very satisfied with what has happened. We're looking forward to have a very united party that is able to organize itself to support the Nana Dutankwa Kufado's government going into the 2020 elections. Mm. So, Michael, we, we, we can't uh, let this pass without talking about the number of injunctions which came up in this primary. We had the Amasaman election cancelled, and then there was an injunction for the one at Asawase, but the party went ahead to go on with the one at Asawase. Why would a party like the NPP that believes so much in the rule of law still go ahead to carry out that election in Asawase? Well, thank you very much. The, the, the leadership of the party, the party at the national level, uh, directed that uh, even though we had not been served with the service of injunction on us, uh, the party advised that the constituency party should not proceed with the conduct of the constituency conference that would select the president, parliamentary candidates. So as you are aware, in the case of Amma Summer, the constituency having incurred all that cost, the National Party having bought all the cost, decided to be law abiding and as you said, uh, did not go ahead mm. with the conduct of the conference. The case of uh, Asawasi constituency, you are telling me, I just returned from Tamale, uh, to supervise the conduct of the conference the night uh, constituencies. But I'm not aware something of that sort has happened. If the region, if the constituency has gone ahead to conduct uh, the acclamation, I must say that uh, the party do not support it. Uh, leadership will in due course required of the regional party to submit a report to that effect and, and will come out. At the moment, what I can say is that the National Party do not recognize anything like that. Mm. So the party doesn't recognize the candidate of Ali Dusaydu because he has been heavily endorsed Ali as, as Dusaydu, 
Ali Bisedu is a sole candidate for Atawasi constituency. You were not served with any court in Jansen. However, however, the party decided not to proceed. What I'm saying is that the party leadership is not aware and does not recognize anything like that. So if you are telling me that something has gone, what I'm saying is that the party leadership will not recognize anything like that. And leadership required of the national regional party to submit a report to that effect. But we, really, what, what is it with the Asawasi constituency? Because we know the NDC also had its fair it's, share of problems at their primaries and now. We, we are conducting, we've conducted conferences across one, the main eight constituencies, aside the, the, the ones that the party put on hold. What I'm saying is that we cannot belabor the point by going into it from one point to the other. The National Party do not recognize anything like that. And if you are telling me what leadership will require of the regional parties for them to submit a report to that effect, I think for now we can put that on hold and discuss other issues. As you are aware, aside this one, the party had a very successful conference across these 98 constituencies. Mm. And the, the, the issue of votes buying has surfaced again at Ejimaku Enyan Isiam, the provision of cars by an aspirant on the day of election. What is the party's position on this act, votes buying? Did, 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 did that aspirant win the elections? Come again, Hello? come again, Mr. Nwako. He didn't. Yes. I'm, I'm saying that, I mean, uh, in elections uh, contestation, the people who want to uh, address uh, some interests of some of the agents. The party do not support, and uh, as a law-abiding party, uh, we appreciate that there are law uh, on, on electoral offenses. Mm. So the party that... advise that we conduct our campaign to conform with the laws of the country. And therefore, it is coming to me as a surprise that uh, vote by and all that sort. For now, I've not received any petition from any of the aspirants uh, who contested in the Jumato in Yenisien that anything of that sort happened. Mm. I'm here to receive the report from the national rep assigned to the region, Honorable Ufuri Siyama, on what was observed throughout the constituencies in the central region. So what are you telling me it's something that I'll find out if something of that sort happens. All right. Before I let you go, how confident is, is the NPP in the people you have elected come 2020? These are often of consistencies all, of, for of, the NPP. all those who were cleared by the National Executive Committee to proceed to conduct their campaigns among the delegates for the conference, that has so much confidence in, in them that whoever of them that gets the mandate from the delegate is in right position, is eligible and qualified to contest a seat on behalf of the party. These are people, the party has no uh, uh, challenge in presenting them to the EEC as candidate for the 2020 election. We therefore hope that these people who have been elected or selected have the full support of the delegate and with the battle still being the loss, mm. and with all hands on deck, a new patriotic party is formidable to support Nana Dan Kukufado's government to prosecute the 2020 election. As you are aware, the EIU report indicated that Nana Dan Kukufado is more likely to retain power come 2020. Mm. And if the new patriotic party is able to organize its internal primaries in a manner that conforms with the set rules and regulations as prescribing electoral laws, the party is likely to win more parliamentary seats. And it is exactly what we have done. All right. Thank you very much. And we're wishing the party all the best. Evan Snemako is Director of Research and Elections of the New Patriotic Party. So let me quickly run you through some of the stories. I mean, the votes or the results that have come in from the primaries. Now, at the Kbon Katamanso constituency, Hope saying Yalvi Adoye won with 321 votes there. And then the Daboya 
Mankirigu constituency, we have Mahama Eshe Saini winning with 162 votes against Samuel Tikes, 77 votes. In the SUTV South constituency, Yao Ousu Brimpong is winning, how has won with 293 votes as opposed to Alaji Ali Suraj, 193 Votes in the Yonyo constituency, we have Oscar Liwa winning with 211 votes and Aka Frank Fuseni winning with 51 votes. So, here, um, we also have Professor Yanka in the Aguna East constituency, as well as Dr. Amin Mohammed Anta winning Karaga. We've told you a lot all about these ones and so we'll still stay on this and do some other stories now one of the females who contested the Shige consistency in the new patriotic party often consistency elections emerged winner Eunice Tassi polled 194 votes out of the 36 votes cast here's a report by Sarah Paku Voting commenced at the Sege constituency in the Adan West district of the Greater Accra region at 9 a.m. 372 delegates from 66 polling centers in the constituency were expected to cast their votes. Three candidates made up of two females, Eunice Lassi and Lena Bake Kwao, and the only male amongst them, Penel Te Reina, contested the seat. Eunice Lassi emerged the winner with 194 votes. Lena Bake Kwao came second with 143 votes and Penel Te Reina emerged third with 17 votes. Total ballot cast was 355 with one rejected vote. With the power invested in me, I declare Madam Yusi Lassi as the NPP parliamentary candidate for Adawe. After the declaration, the Great Accra Regional Chairman of the NPP, Divine Otu Agohom, wants the winner to go the extra mile to win the seat for the NPP in the 2020 general elections. The difference between herself and then the other lady who came second on the list is not that wide. That gives you an indication that the party appears divided in the very center. We have the responsibility now to unite everybody and start preparation towards the 2020 elections. The winner, Eunice Lassi, is hopeful of unseating the NDC incumbent MP, Christian Kolite Otute. Say the constituency will be laughing at 2020 after the election and I've been sworn in as the MP. I'm going to put a smile on their face because I know what my government is capable of doing. The contender, Lena Bakekwa, was out of the centre before declarations were made. Now, still on this, the presidential staffer Alex Marte emerged victorious at the Ningo Pram Pram constituency and joins me in the studio. Good evening to you, sir. Thank you for joining us. Good evening. Let me say congratulations Thank to you. Thank you very much. How difficult was it? It was indeed very difficult. But before I come to the explaining how difficult it is, I think I have to say good evening to Please my... speak up so that people you are saying good evening to can hear you. I know you've been the, talking the, and shouting yeah, the whole so day, the but voices, they want to hear you. The voice is affected. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I want to say good morning to the good people of Nemo Pram Pram. <clears throat> Especially my delegates and uh, my team. They really work very hard. Yes. And it was actually a tough battle. Yeah. But thanks to God, we sailed through. Was it only God or you, you bought votes? I don't have money to buy votes. Hmm. No, so I didn't buy a vote. Hmm. They voted for me because I had a message. And they bought into my message. But she gave delegates food and water and TNT? Every man be my seat. So hmm. not only delegates, no delegates too, who came around eight. Hmm. Yeah. So you have, um, let me say, one of the most difficult tasks this time, because for the past 27 years, the mm -hmm. NPP hasn't won the seat. Um, what new are you bringing to ensure that come 2020, the NPP takes the seat? Come 2020, it's a rescue mission. Okay. Yes. And there are so many things we are going to unroll 
in the way on the way to December 2020. So definitely, TV3 should just keep close. Mm. You will see how it goes. Mm. You, 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 you think you are fit to go head on with Sam George? Ah, but when you sit out here, you think that, that, that Sam George is a strong man. I have a friend in the house here who is from the constituency. He can tell you how he is not as strong over there as it's, it's, it's portrayed outside the constituency. I know from today going, he will not be sleeping. Yeah. Why won't he be sleeping? Ah, when the lion meets a hyena, the lion will never, definitely not sleep. Yeah. Mm. So what do you think the NDC is not doing right in the constituency that you and your team would want to make right going was, forward to 2020? Thank you very much. That constituency, when you go through that constituency, all the signature developments in the constituency came through the down Kwabuzia tradition. The road from the Afrao, uh, from the Winya to Pram Pram continue. In 1972, was a third road. And it was done by Professor Buzia. The pipe and water in the Pram Pram was also a, a project by Dr. Buzia. The clinic, which is now a polyclinic in Pram Pram, was also by Dr. Buzia. Remember, uh, Professor Buzia's wife was Namoko Buzia, who was from Pram Pram. Yeah. There was a, big, a bridge which has, been, has not been uh, done for centuries. Okay. It was done by President J. Kufo. So all the signature developments in that constituency came through the Danko Buzia tradition. And I know this very time, as they are going to be reminded and they will see seeing the good work of President Anandela Nkwe Kufuado, the Ningo Prama people wouldn't want to be in opposition again. Definitely, we will move into uh, position. Mm. Yes. So go, go, going forward 2020, <laughs> even from now to 2020, what should we be expecting from the team of Alex Smarte? There are going to be, there is going to be a lot to be, expect, to be expected. And we are going to work very hard, exceedingly hard. Mm. Yes. So after today, we are going to sit down and get back to our drawing board and uh, put our strategies in place. So definitely, it's going to be a, we are going to go the long haul. Thank you so much for joining us. Alex Mate is the victor of the Ningo Pram Pram constituency in the NPP primary elections. This is News at 10 on TV3, also live on DSTV channel 279. We're back with more stories after this break. Don't go away. You are still at the Election Command Centre here and it's news at 10 on TV3. This chief executive of Elembele, Kwasi Bonzo, has won the NPP parliamentary primaries to represent the party for the third time. He polled 359 out of a total valid vote of 630 to beat his fierce contender, Western Regional Treasurer, Homa Meza who had 262 of the votes. Addressing a charge delegates, Mr. Bonzo said his victory was obvious. Our Western Region reporter, Eric Yawajay, spoke to him after he was declared winner. <laughs> So it's all over here at LMLA and as many predicted, the district chief executive won. He had 359 votes as against his fierce rival, Hannah Mieza, who had 262 of the votes and the 10 aspirant also had nine. There were nine rejected ballots. So in all, 632 delegates participated in today's premise. I have with me Bonzo K, popularly known as 34 Kwa. Um, this is definitely a sweet win for you. 
uh, I thank God. I thank God for the victory. But most importantly, I want to thank my supporters, MPP delegates, who against all odds work very hard to secure the victory. This victory belongs to the MPP of Alamele. That's all I will say. Uh, we work hard for it. We have been in the trenches. And I believe the delegates, they have spoken and spoken loudly. The next thing is for us to march on against NDC and win this seat for the first time for a new patriotic party. Okay. Uh, before today's exercise, I had an interview with you about the popular saying that fear delegate, but yours was trash delegate. Is this a manifestation of what you've been thinking all along? Because I know the delegate, I know them. The reason I trust them is that I know them and I know they trust me. Uh, they, I've been with them for so long. I've been around for 23 years in this constituency and I trust them and they trust me. So, of course, uh, it's, it's democracy. Definitely, the opponent, they also work very hard. You expect them to get some votes. But eventually, the delegate has spoken. And we believe that the voice of the people is the voice of God. Thank for you, what really worked for you? Uh, my relationship with the delegate. I have a very good relationship with them. As I speak here, I know each of the delegates by name, first and second names. And they know that I'm the person that can lead this party to victory in 2020. So Jonathan Asantiotri is a political analyst and senior lecturer at the University of Cape Coast. He's joining me on the phone lines. I also have Ben Arthur, a civil engineer and a political analyst, who is my guest in the studio. We'll be toggling between these two gentlemen to find your thoughts on the election. So let me quickly go on the phone and speak with Jonathan Asantiotri. Hello, sir. Thank you for joining us again. Good evening, Grace. Good evening to your viewers. Yes, I remember I had a discussion with you last night on what your expectations are for the election today. And having followed it today, how would you describe it? Well, I think that uh, I was not far from wrong. Um, mm. I think um, I said that they definitely, there is a need for them to conduct themselves so well, um, which is a party in government. And uh, obviously, you are going to have a lot more of candidates showing up for the orphan constituencies, especially in areas where it's, it's, it's virtually 50-50 more or less. You know, it's virtually 50-50. You will have quite a number of candidates showing up because currently it is the party in government. And so, um, as it stands now, the acrimony would, would, would be very much less when it comes to, you know, the orphan constituencies. Does, does that make it right for us to say the election has been incident-free? Well, uh, yes, of course. It's, by and large, it has been an incident-free, but of course, you still have pockets of issues here and there told, you know, more or less trying to impress the delegates, as it were. Mm -hmm. to motivate them today the term is motivation motivation of the delegates and not a, a subtle way of buying the consciences of of the delegates the, mm -hmm. the, the catchphrase is motivation Mm -hmm. So, still on this issue of buying consciences, we, we, we have reports that in the Ejimaku Enyan STM constituency, cars were allegedly shared. Uh, lo looking at the, the gravity of this, can we ever find a way to do away with votes buying in our elections? Can we get there? It's a multi million question that is asked me. Mm. If you look at the trend, I think it's going to get worse. It is going to get worse until there is some kind of revolution or a change. You know, a kind of force that will sweep away this kind of parties. You just cannot go out there expect to collect A, B, C, and D. And when these colleagues get into government thinking that, you think their are money, who just have been given to you as if they did not work for that money. I know that's not going to happen. So we will end turn up and say, ah, these people are corrupt. They are corrupt. Yes, they are corrupt because it started from a particular process for which delegates were quite involved. I don't know 
whether it is just a dependent of a, a delegate who benefit, or more or less the the entire membership of the constituency from 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 which the delegates are coming from. Mm. You see, it is more or less you know um, uh, just a few of them deciding for the entire constituency how things should go yeah. by virtue of collecting A, B, C, and D. And if somebody is dishing out this small, small, whether it's a tools or uh, I-10 or whatever, I yeah. cars, that level, we were here when the, the chairman of the party decided to, to give buses to virtually every constituency for which he was able to induce the minds of the people to win the election. Now, if the chairman is still working about us, still the chairman of the party, then I don't see why those who are the lower levels wouldn't yeah. have the opportunity to say that, well, there's how the trend is and I'm going to go along that path. Mm. Obviously, I'm going to win. Mm. You see, and a human area, for example, as I said, you know, in the central region, it's a strange region. Anything can happen. Yeah. You know, but if somebody is contesting in the voter region, for example, you can't go and give gas because... It is much ado about nothing. Mm. You see, so the areas like you know Jumaku and, and other part of the central region and even in the western region, you know, it could either go the way of the NDC or the NPP. Apart from the fact that those who have consistently been voting either the NPP or the NDC, like for example in the Upper Plains area, you see. So I think that. Virtually, it is that person's political strategy to do mm. so. Mm. Because there is more likelihood that he could win or he could lose. There is yes. less likelihood that he could lose. Mm. And so, what, what, what one of the, the favorite party. lines of the NPP government is we have the men, we have the people, we have the strength. Looking at the caliber of people who have been elected in this election, do you think they can still say they have the men to help them win? these seats in the 2020 elections? Well, I think that today if somebody says they have the men, it's more of the, the politics of the highest bidder. I am not too convinced about the substance and the quality that is about the highest bidder. Mm. And that is the trend. So fair-minded people who do not have the world without, the way the trend of democracy is, Today, you know, we wouldn't have such categories of people coming into the picture. And so, if a president who gets a point opportunity to rule does not, you know, take a conscious effort at bringing in or roping in fair minded people who are more or less achievers yeah. and whom he knows very well are not, you know, partisanly tainted. Mm to come into the fold of his government, then it's all going to, going to be people who are always partisan and they have nothing to show. Now the fact that once they have spent so much money, they will have to use the state apparatus to recoup, to recoup. those kinds of money mm. in order to be able to stay in power mm. or in order to be able to motivate the people who give them the money it mm. once, once again. Mm. All right. Thank you very much for speaking with us. Jonathan Asante Autry is a political science analyst. This is the extended version of News at 10 on TV3. And Benatha is still here with me in that studio. So, Mr. we have been co covering the election with you since morning till now. And you have been helping us do the monitoring and the analysis. How would you describe the, the, the election? Well, largely successful, you know to organize elections in about 100 constituencies of this magnitude, largely, you know, peaceful, I think it's, it's, a, it's an achievement. Mm. And I will always say that our democracy is growing because mm. uh, many years ago, you will only hear of some bloodshed here and there, uh, some people throwing stones, some pulling out knives here and there, but it's largely successful. It endorses our belief in democracy, mm. that gradually we, are, we have come to terms to accept that, look, that is the way forward. We had reports yes. of injunctions 
in some constituencies, even in Asawase, but the parties still went ahead to to carry out the election. Does that also contribute to the growth of our yeah, democracy? I, I, I would wish that if there had been, if there has been an injunction, I would wish that the the MPP respect it. Yeah. Uh, because uh, it's a party that believes in rule of law. So definitely, if there has been a well instituted, let me say, a well instituted, you know injunction why not respect it mm. so i am for rule of law yeah. and democracy is for rule of law but mathematically speaking if you take two out of hundred it is not significant enough to say that the elections have been marred by injunction so largely 98 mm. percent that is an excellent <laughs> mark okay so we just <laughs> spoke with jonathan asante who says that the phenomenon of votes buying in the country is going to get worse. Do you, do you agree uh, with that? I agree in some manners and disagree in some areas. When it comes to our general elections, vote buying or anything of semblance, you know, is going down. Because it is? Yes, it's going down because if you have, uh, like I mentioned earlier, if you had witnessed the 1992, 96, 2000 elections, you come to terms with the fact that these days people are well informed and it is becoming very difficult to simply just pump money into an election and believe that you're going to win. If you don't have the goodwill, you don't have good message, you mm. know, the people don't see you as a good material. Uh, I could also foresee party primaries uh, doing away with a kind of vote buying if only participation will be broadened. Okay. You know, I, I understand the two major parties have a fear for broadening the electoral college. But I know maybe in the next 10, 15 years, that will be the order of the day because other party members will want to assert you know, themselves as to their right to participate in activities. If you had in the whole constituency 2,000 delegates mm -hmm. voting, it will be very difficult to find enough resources to influence them. them. Yeah. So as we get there, it becomes more difficult. Even if you think of vote buying, you will not be able to. Yes, you give your offer, but you won't purchase anybody on the electoral market. Mm. Vote buying exists, but I can tell you, if you don't have good message, if you are not a good material, it is not going to get you anywhere anywhere yes mm. so let's look at asawase and ningo pram pram in as much as the election there were very peaceful or successful we know over the years these two consistencies are more of flashy how do you suggest we prepare ahead of security in terms of the 2020 election in these two elections as well as the other elections for for areas if i may call uh Hotspots. Mm, hot spots, uh, yeah. There are certain areas that we used to call black spots. In accident studies, we have places that we call black spots because uh, accident re reoccurs in those areas. Constituencies like, uh, like Nima, uh, that is uh, Nima East, mm. uh, Ayawaso East, that, that is, that is uh, the appropriate name. And in other areas such as as you have mentioned, the, 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 those areas. I think uh, it's a system that we need to do away with. For example, when we are going to go into elections, I believe that public education is key. Hmm. If NCCA is doing its work, if the Electoral Commission is also doing enough public education, if the NGOs, the general masses, and the other stakeholders are doing their public education very well, nobody would want to take arms and go and disagree with a pattern that is so obvious. Mm. Why would you mm. want to, to fight the choice of the people? It is when electoral processes are not made transparent, when people don't have, uh, they don't identify with the set out grievance procedures yeah. and they don't have belief in it. When incumbency tends to be abused mm. and people believe that they have no way out, that is when violence becomes an option. Alternative. But if it is free and fair, you will feel ashamed to even protest when you have actually participated in the process right from 
registration of members, those who form the college or yeah. those who are voters, they have been part. When there's nomination, there's free. I mean, it's free and fair. When there is vetting, it's free and fair. And the voting day processes, counting, sorting, whatever, has been free and fair. Mm -hmm. It becomes very difficult for even your supporters to go and fight for you. Mm -hmm. You know, they become disabled if you lose because the, the processes have been free and fair. And it's clear. Mm -hmm. Everybody and it's has clear. seen but it. But if it is not free and fair, yeah. that is when people begin to, you know... Agitate. But of course, when that. it comes to... This is uh, party primaries, but in the general election, when it comes to by-elections, by-elections are seen as hotspots. Mm. Uh, that has been the trend in Ghana because when there's a government in power and there's one in opposition, especially if the, the seat belongs to an opposition party, party, and then the government of the day believes that, look, we can annex it. Mm. Sometimes the forces that are sent there, <laughs> uh, you, you, you enjoy it. Yeah. <laughs> so, that's, so I'll have you hold on. Let me go to the Pru East District where the DCE there, Joshua Kweku Abonkra, has been elected the parliamentary candidates for NPP in the constituency in the Buno East region. The election, which was held in Yeji, the district capital of Pru East, was contested by three candidates. Joshua Kweku Abonkra, who was declared winner, polled 202 votes of the total votes cast of 416, while David Yalmensa polled 154 and Dr. King David Amwa also polling 57 votes. Joshua Kweku Abonkra called on his contenders to come together and work as a united force to unseat the NDC Member of Parliament, Dr. Kwabna Donko, in the 2020 general elections. the MPP we want to pray and hope that together we shall work and to be able to unseat Honorable Kamala Donko and to take over this seat for the first time. Since 1992, uh, we have never had the opportunity of winning the seat. Mm. So let's come back from the pool is and then speak with Ben Arthur who has been helping us talk about the NPP election. Now, most, let me say, all the aspirants or the candidates who have won in this election are saying they are going to annex the NDC, they are going to annex the NDC um, seats to, the, to their party. How would you say they are ready or prepared to win this, is especially on the fact that some of them have not had the seats as for as long as 27 years, even in the Lingo Pram Pram constituency? Well, thanks once again. I mean... Uh, it's the same language when it comes to the NDC. When the NDC held its parliamentary primaries, you know, in areas where there are certain MPP MPs, mm. that's the same language. We are going to annex. But let's face the facts. There are certain areas when you look at the gaps, I mean, the difference in vote, you, you want to be realistic. That, look, are we able to close it? There are certain areas, the, the answer is yes, you can close the gap. There are certain areas you can actually, you know, take over. Mm. So we can, we can define the constituencies into these two differences, your stronghold and the one, sorry, three categories, the ones that are for you, the ones that could be 50-50, mm. and the ones that you are going to try, okay. you know. But the, the whole strategy for having parliamentary candidates is not to win all the seats. Let me be very factual on this. Sometimes you put up the best of candidates to also maximize the votes in particular areas so that when it comes to the presidential, which is seen, the whole Ghana is seen as one constituency. So, so it's, if, it's if, more if, like if, a, if your candidate a means to an end. It's not a means to an end. That is part of the electoral process mm. that you put up a candidate everywhere. But the truth of the matter is that you will, be, you will just be unrealistic to assume that you are going to win all the 275 seats or constituencies. But you know yeah. there are certain areas you will not win, and yet you put candidates there. Yeah. The meaning is that it is competition. Mm. So you put the best, I mean, foot Put forward. There to make sure that you will be able to get a lot of votes to come and add to the presidential. So it is two things done at the same time. At the same Both time. the parliamentary and the, the presidential. presidential. So this suggests that in every parliamentary elections, 
the presidential people are interested. Okay. <laughs> That's a very interesting revelation there by Mr. And, ben and Arthur. May, may be shadow actors. Shadow actors. <laughs> Thank you very much for speaking with us. Ben Arthur is a civil engineer and political analyst. This is News at 10 on TV3. <laughs> So you're still on the extended edition of News at 10 here on TV3 and we've been talking about the NPP primaries for some hundred orphan 